President Bola Tinubu has announced several palliative programs to cushion the effects of the removal of fuel subsidy by his administration. The initiative comes in the wake of mountain hardship resulting from President Tinubu's inauguration day declaration that fuel subsidy is gone. In an apparent effort to alleviate the pain of millions of Nigerians, the President told Nigerians in a na national broadcast that respite had come for farmers, small business owners and manufacturers, among others. The programs are to be funded with 500 billion naira approved from an 800 million dollar World Bank loan earlier requested by former President Muhammad Buhari for a national social safety net program during his government's twilight months. My fellow citizens, I want to talk to you about our economy. It is important that you understand the reasons for the policy measures have taken to combat the serious economic challenges this nation had long faced. I'm not going to talk in difficult terms by dwelling on economic jargon and concepts. I will speak in plain, clear language so that you know where I stand. More importantly, so that you see and hopefully we share my vision regarding the journey to a better, more productive economy for our beloved country. For several years, I have consistently maintained the position that the first subsidy had to go. This once beneficial measure had outlived its usefulness. The subsidy cost us trillions of naira yearly. Such as a vast sum of money will have been better spent on public transportation, health care, school, housing, and even national security. Instead, it was being funneled into the deep pocket and lavish bank account of a selected group of individuals. This group had amassed so much wealth and power that they became a serious threat to the fairness of our economy and the integrity of our democratic governance. To be blunt, Nigeria could never become the society it was intended to be as long as such small, powerful, yet unelected groups hold enormous influence over our political economy and the institutions that govern it. The whims of the few should never hold dominant sway over the hopes and aspiration of the many. If we are to be a democracy, the people and not the power of money must be sovereign. The preceding administration saw this looming danger as well. Indeed, it made no provision in the 2023 appropriation for subsidy after June this year. Removal of this once helpful device that had transformed into a millstone around the country's neck had become inevitable. Also, the multiple exchange rate, the system that had been established be became nothing but a highway of currency speculation. It diverted money that should have been used to create jobs, build factories, and businesses from millions of people. Our national wealth was doled out on favorable terms to a handful of people who had been made filthy rich simply by moving money from one hand to another. This too was extremely unfair and is not acceptable. It also compounded the threat that the illicit and mass accumulation of money posed to the future of our democratic system and its, uh, its economy. I had promised to reform the economy for the long time good by fighting major imbalances that has plagued our economy, ending the subsidy and the preferential exchange rate system were key to this fight. This fight is to define the fate and future of our nation. Much is in balance. 
Thus, the effect in our economy immensely profited a tiny elite, the elite of the elite, you might call them. As we move to fight the flaws in the economy, the people who grow rich from them predictably will fight back through every means necessary. But we are ready. Our economy is going through a tough patch and you are being hurt by it, I know. The cost of fuel has gone up. Food and other prices have followed it. Households and businesses struggling. Things seem anxious and uncertain. I understand the hardship you face. I wish there were other ways, but there is not. If there were, I would have taken that route as I came here to help, not to hurt the people and the nation that I love so dearly. What I can offer in the immediate is to reduce the burden of current economic situation, which has imposed on all of us, most especially on businesses, the working class, and most vulnerable among us. Already, the federal government is working closely with states and local governments to implement interventions that will cushion the pains of our people across socioeconomic brackets. Earlier this month, I signed four executive orders in keeping with my electoral promise to address unfriendly physical policies and multiple taxes that are stifling the business environment. These executive orders on suspension and deferred commencement of some taxes will provide the necessary buffers and headroom to businesses in manufacturing sector to continue to thrive and expand. To strengthen the manufacturing sector, increase its capacity to expand and create good paying jobs, we are going to spend $75 billion between July 2023 and March 2024. Our objective is to fund minimum of 75 enterprises with great potential to kickstart a sustainable economic growth, accelerated structural transformation and improved productivity. Each of these 75 manufacturing enterprises will be able to access 1 billion credit at a maximum of 9% per annum, with maximum of 60 months repayment for long-term loans and 12 months for working capital. Our administration recognizes the importance of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises and the informal sector as the drivers of growth. We are going to energize this important sector with 125 billion. Out of the sum, we will spend 50 billion conditional grant to 1 million nano businesses between now and March 24. Our target is to give a minimum of 50,000 each to 1,300 nano businesses owners in each of the 774 local governments across the country. Ultimately, this program will further drive financial inclusion by onboarding beneficiaries into the former banking system. In like manner, we will fund 100,000 MSMEs and startups with 75 billion. Under this scheme, each enterprise promoter will be able to get between 500,000 and 1 million at the maximum 9% interest per annum and repayment period of 36 months. To further ensure that food prices and the items remain affordable, we have had a multi-stakeholder engagement with various farmers and associations 
and the operators within the agricultural value chain. In short and in immediate terms, we will ensure stable food are available and affordable. To this end, I have ordered release of 200,000 metric tons of grains from strategic reserves to household across the 36 states and FCT to moderate prices. We are also providing 225,000 metric tons of fertilizer, seeding, and other inputs to farmers who are committed to our food security agenda. Our plan to support cultivation of 500,000 hectares of farmland and all year-round farming practice remain on course. To be specific, 200 billion out of the 500 billion approved by the National Assembly will be disbursed as follows. Our administration will invest 50 billion each to cultivate 150,000 hectares of rice and maize. 50 billion each will also be a hairmarked to cultivate 100,000 hectares of wheat and cassava. This expansive agricultural program will be implemented targeting small farm holders and leveraging large-scale private sector players in the agri-business with strong performance record. In this regard, the expertise of developed financial institutions, commercial banks, and microfinance banks will be tapped in to develop a viable and appropriate transaction structure for all stakeholders. Fellow Nigerians, I made a solemn pledge to work for you how to improve your welfare and living condition is of primary importance to me, and it is the only thing that keeps me up day and night. It is in the light of this that I approved the infrastructure support for the states. This new infrastructure fund will enable states to intervene, to invest and reinvest in critical areas and bring relief to many of the pain points, as well as revamp our decaying healthcare and educational infrastructure. The fund will also bring improvement to rural access roads, to ease evacuation of farm produce to markets. With the fund, our state will become more competitive and on a stronger financial footing to deliver economic prosperity to Nigerians. Part of our program is to roll out buses across state and local government for mass transit at a much more affordable rate. We have made provision to invest 100 billion between now and March 2024 to acquire minimum of 3,000 units of 20-seater CNG fuel buses. These buses will be shared to major transportation companies in the state using the intensity of travel per capita. Participating transport companies will be able to access credit under the facility at a maximum per annum 9% interest rate with 60 months repayment period. And then in the same vein, we are also working in a collaboration with the labor unions to introduce a new national minimum, minimum wage for workers. I want to tell you, our workers, that this, your salary review is coming. Once we agree on the min minimum wage and general upward review, we will make budget provision for it for immediate implementation. I want to use this opportunity to salute many private employers in the organized private sector who have already implemented general salary review for employees. Fellow Nigerians, this period may be hard on us 
and there is no doubt that it's tough on us. But I urge you all to look beyond the present temporary pains and aim at the larger picture. All our good and helpful plans are in the works. More importantly, I know that they will work. Sadly, there was an unavoidable lag between subsidy remover and these plans coming fully online. However, we are swiftly closing the time gap. I plead with you, please have faith in our ability to deliver and in our concern for your well-being. We will get out of this turbulence. And due to the measures we have taken, Nigeria will be better equipped and able to take advantage of the future that awaits her. And in a little over two months, we have saved over a trillion naira that will have been squandered on the unproductive fuel subsidy, which only benefited smugglers and fraudsters. That money will now be used more directly and more beneficially for you and your families. For example, we shall fulfill our promise to make education more affordable to all and provide loans to higher education students who may need them. No Nigerian student we have to abandon higher education because of lack of money. Our commitment is to promote the greatest good for the greatest number of our people. On principle, we shall never falter. We are also monitoring the effect of exchange rate and inflation on gasoline prices. If and when necessary, we will intervene. I assure you, my fellow countrymen and women, that we are exiting the darkness to enter a new and glorious dawn. Now, I must get back to work in order to make this vision come true. Thank you all for listening. And may God bless Federal Republic of Nigeria.